Sander. Gotta be kidding. Waldo. Oye, los tuyos están esperando, nos tenemos que ir. Dame un minuto, Adela. Un minuto. So you have any more in the back? Ubaldo Jimenez, the epic name behind an epic breakout year. This is the end of the line for Ubaldo Jimenez. Only a few years earlier, the lanky right-hander could have counted himself among the elite pitchers in the game. Now, as he shuffles off the mound into the cold October night, his days as an ace seem like an eternity ago. How did the one-time superstar end up here? Let's rewind. Wait, 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 not that far. The Colorado Rockies were in trouble. Going into 2007, everyone's favorite team named after a geological formation was coming off of their sixth straight losing season and their 11th straight without a playoff appearance. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Despite fielding a lineup that was top five in the league in batting, on-base percentage, and slugging, the Rockies finished tied for last in the NL West, thanks to a pitching staff that ranked 13th in ERA, allowing an average of 4.66 runs per game. To be fair, it wasn't entirely the pitching staff's fault. Towing the rubber at Coors Field is not an enviable task. But the fact remained, if the Rockies were going to take advantage of a roster that included superstars Todd Helton, Matt Holliday, and an up-and-coming Troy Tulowitzki, they needed pitching. Enter Ubaldo Jimenez. Coming in at 6'6", 200 pounds, the Dominican-born hurler had long been touted as one of Colorado's most promising young arms. So, after a brief taste of the big leagues in late 2006, Jimenez was called up for good in July of 2007, replacing Taylor Buckholtz in the starting rotation. He put up a solid performance, delivering quality starts as the Rockies chased down their first postseason appearance since the original Toy Story was in theaters. Over the last two weeks of the season, they would drop only one game, barely edging out San Diego for the National League wildcard spot. With only 16 career starts under his belt, Jimenez was put to the test almost immediately, getting the start in Game 3 of the NLDS against the 89-73 and 73 Phillies. He performed admirably, throwing six innings of one-run ball against a Philadelphia lineup that included MVP caliber hitters in Ryan Howard and Jimmy Rollins. The Rockies would win the game 2-1, sweep the Phillies, and advance to the NLCS against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Jimenez put up another solid start in the NLCS, once again allowing only one run, this time over five innings pitched. Colorado would go on to sweep the Diamondbacks, earning a spot in their first ever World Series appearance against the Red Sox. Unfortunately, by the time they made it to Boston, the magic was beginning to wear off for the Rockies. After sweeping two straight series, Colorado failed to win a single game against the Red Sox, who took home their second championship in four years. Jimenez put up a valiant effort in Game 2, but was tagged with the 2-1 loss. The 2007 postseason may have ended in disappointment for Colorado, but they were excited by what they saw in their 23-year-old rookie, who pitched fearlessly in each of his three playoff appearances. The future looked bright for Rockies fans. The 2008 season was up and down for Ubaldo Jimenez, who led the National League with 34 starts. His 12-12 record and 3.99 ERA were both respectable, while his 172 strikeouts were good for 14th in the league. On the other hand, his 103 walks and 16 wild pitches were less than ideal, but not entirely unexpected for Jimenez, whose league-leading 95-mile-per-hour fastball made him prone to control issues. As for the Rockies, they finished with a disappointing record of 74-88, and failing to make the playoffs just one year after winning the pennant. Ubaldo made headlines in the lead-up to the 2009 season when he struck out a record 10 of the 13 batters he faced in the opening round of the World Baseball Classic. He carried that momentum into the regular season, to the tune of a 3.47 ERA 
and a record of 15 and 12, but it was just a hint of things to come. On April 17, 2010, Ubaldo Jimenez took the mound for the second game of a three-game series in Atlanta, facing a Braves lineup including sluggers Jason Hayward, Martin Prado, and Brian McCann. He promptly retired the side in the first inning without giving up a hit. Then, in the second inning, he did it again. Then again, and again, and you get the picture. The only time Jimenez even came close to giving up a hit came in the seventh, when Troy Glaus drove a 3-1 fastball to deep left center. But Dexter Fowler was having none of that. And Fowler lays out, and he makes the catch! Dexter Fowler! Remember that play! Wow! Off the bat, I didn't think there was any way! Jimenez promptly finished off the remaining eight batters, securing the no-hitter and his place in history. Over the course of the game, he threw a career-high 128 pitches and struck out seven. His fastball reached 100 miles per hour three times and averaged nearly 97 miles per hour overall. He also let up six walks, but after switching from the windup to the stretch in the fifth inning, he didn't allow one for the rest of the game. To this day, Ubaldo Jimenez remains the only pitcher to throw a no-hitter in Colorado Rockies history. While some might be content with such an achievement, Jimenez was far from finished. He rounded off the month of April with five wins, becoming only the second Colorado pitcher ever to take home the Pitcher of the Month award. He went 25 and a third consecutive innings without giving up a run, a franchise record for a starter. The run ended against the Padres on May 3rd on a Yorvit Torrealba RBI double. Not to be discouraged, Ubaldo simply began another scoreless streak, this time running it up to 33 straight innings, breaking the team record for consecutive scoreless innings by any pitcher, starter or reliever. He was once again named NL Pitcher of the Month for May, becoming the first Rockies pitcher to win the award more than once, and the first pitcher to win the award in both April and May since Pedro Martinez in 1999. Through his first 11 starts, Jimenez had a 0.78 ERA, the lowest in MLB history. All of this culminated on July 4th, when Jimenez was selected as the National League starter for the All-Star Game, over such aces as Tim Lincecum, Adam Wainwright, and Roy Halladay. Entering the game, he led all Major League pitchers with a record of 15-1 and and an ERA of 2.20. Over the course of two scoreless innings, Jimenez would throw 25 pitches and strike out one, as the NL won their first All-Star game since 1996. Jimenez closed out the season with a 19-8 record and a 2.88 ERA over 221 innings. It seemed like Ubaldo Jimenez was on his way to becoming the first ever Colorado Rocky to win the Cy Young Award. At least he would have been, if not for one man. The one-two pitch. Hit toward third. Castro has it. Spins. Fires. A perfect game! Roy Halladay has thrown the second perfect game in Philadelphia Phillies history. He faces 27 batters. He retires all 27. Expectations were high entering the 2011 season for Ubaldo Jimenez, but through 21 starts, he had failed to recapture the magic of his all-star year, going 6-9 with a 4.46 ERA. In retrospect, some regression was to be expected, considering that Jimenez had struggled after the all-star break in 2010, going 4-7. But it was nevertheless surprising when the Rockies announced on July 31, 2011, that they would be shipping their star pitcher off to the Cleveland baseball team in exchange for a package of prospects headlined by 22-year-old Drew Pomerantz. Despite hopes that the change of scenery would help him regain his ace form, Jimenez's career in Cleveland was off to a disappointing start after going 4-4 with a 5.10 ERA over 11 games. Things continued to decline in 2012 when Ubaldo put up a 5.40 ERA to go with a league-leading 17 losses. The low point of the season came on July 14th, when Jimenez was pulled from a start against the Blue Jays after giving up a career-high eight earned runs in only two and a third innings. On April 2nd, he was suspended for five games after hitting Troy Tolowitzki with a pitch. 
reports emerged that conflict had developed between the former teammates after both Tulo and Carlos Gonzalez received lucrative extensions following the 2010 season, while Jimenez got nothing. Come 2013, it appeared that the superstar from just three years earlier was long gone. Jimenez finished the first half of the season with a 4.56 ERA and a walk rate of 12.2%. But then, just when it looked like all hope was lost, Jimenez became good again. Actually, good might be underselling it. In the second half of the 2013 season, Ubaldo Jimenez became the best pitcher on the planet. He dropped his walk rate by nearly 5 percentage points, decreased his home runs per 9 innings to a minuscule 0.32 and his second half ERA of 1.82 was second only to Clayton Kershaw. During this stretch, Cleveland went 21-6 in the month of September to clinch their first playoff appearance since 2007. This stunning turnaround was enough to earn Ubaldo a four-year, $50 million deal with the Orioles that offseason. In his first season with Baltimore, Jimenez was unable to repeat that second half success, going 6-9 with a 4.81 ERA over 25 games. However, management still had faith that he could rebound, and after he put up a 2.81 ERA in the first half of 2015, it looked like that faith was paying off. Unfortunately, Jimenez faltered in the second half, finishing with a 5-6 record after the All-Star break. Entering 2016, Jimenez was looking to carry on the moderate success from the previous season, but it was at this point that things really began to unravel. Through 18 appearances, he sported a 7.38 ERA and finished the year with a record of 8-12 over 29 games. However, a complete game showing on September 5th was enough to earn him a spot on the Orioles' wildcard roster against the formidable Toronto Blue Jays. Which is how we ended up here, in the bottom of the 11th, with Cy Young candidate Zach Britton waiting in the bullpen and Ubaldo Jimenez on the mound, the loneliest man in the world. Jimenez finished out his contract with the Orioles in 2017, enduring a career-worst season in which he set career highs in ERA, earned runs, and home runs allowed. He would never pitch in the majors again. Coors is a killer. At 5,200 feet above sea level, Coors Field is far and away the highest stadium in the major leagues, which has earned it a reputation as the most offense-friendly park in baseball. Because of the lower air density at such an elevation, the designers of the park placed the outfield fences extremely far from home plate in an attempt to limit the number of home runs, which had a side effect of creating the largest outfield in baseball. This, plus the fact that breaking balls exhibit less movement in thin air, creates an environment that is a death sentence for pitchers. The Colorado Rockies are one of just two MLB teams to have never had a pitcher throw more than 1,400 career innings, the other being the Florida slash Miami Marlins. Of the seven pitchers to have thrown more than 400 innings at Coors, only Jorge De La Rosa has had any kind of meaningful production into his 30s. At the very least, there appears to be an inverse correlation between pitching at Coors and career longevity which makes it all the more impressive that, after pitching just four total full seasons with the Rockies, Ubaldo Jimenez holds the franchise record for wins above replacement for pitchers, earned run average, and hits per nine innings, while only De La Rosa has more career strikeouts. He is also first in a number of sabermetric stats, including fielding independent pitching, adjusted pitching runs, and adjusted pitching wins. All of this paints a picture of a player who, despite having the odds stacked against him, overcame the Coors effect to put up elite numbers like nobody else could. What allowed Ubaldo Jimenez to be so effective? In addition to his high-speed fastball, Jimenez sported a repertoire that consisted of a two-seamer with strong tailing action, a split-finger fastball, and a changeup that exhibited such strong movement that TV announcers often mistook it for a sinker. He also threw a slider that sat in the mid-80s with sharp, late break that rendered it nearly unhittable. Combined, this arsenal of pitches allowed Jimenez to keep the ball on the ground when he wasn't blowing it by hitters, making him an ideal pitcher for the flyball-friendly course field. It was a high-wire act of epic proportions, but one that could only last for so long, and when his velocity began to decline following the 2010 season, so too did his performance. As for the reason, nobody could quite say. One thing's for certain, though, it wasn't due to lack of effort. In a 2011 article in Sports Illustrated, 
Tom Verducci wrote that Ubaldo Jimenez had, quote, terrific stuff, a powerful frame, and the work ethic of a blast furnace. His manager Jim Tracy once commented that Jimenez wasn't just committed to being a good major league pitcher, he was driven to be one of the best who's ever done it. He's not an excuse maker, he's accountable for everything that takes place, he's always trying to pick up his teammates, I just cannot imagine where we'd be without him. When Jimenez was 16 years old, the Mets had tried to sign him for $20,000 but his mother told them to come back a year later so that Ubaldo could complete high school. When he was signed by the Rockies at 17, it was on the condition that they let him finish his coursework. If not for baseball, Jimenez once said, I'd probably be going to college right now, trying to be a doctor or something. A private man, Jimenez recounted his difficult days in Colorado during a spring training interview in 2012. It was kind of hard being with the Rockies. I went through a lot of things people outside the organization don't know but me and the people in the front office know. In February of 2020, news broke that Ubaldo Jimenez had signed a minor league deal with the Rockies and had been invited to spring training. Things were looking up, and a return to the show was looking like it could be a real possibility. But when MLB was forced to shut down operations due to COVID, Jimenez's comeback aspirations were shut down as well. He was released by the Rockies on July 20th, and officially announced his retirement from professional baseball on September 17, 2020. On paper, Ubaldo Jimenez might not stand out among contemporaries like Roy Halladay, Justin Verlander, and Adam Wainwright. But when you look closer, you'll find a pitcher who is not only one of the best in the league for a period of time, but one of the greatest Colorado Rockies pitchers ever. In article after article ranking the best to ever put on a Rockies uniform, you will find more often than not Jimenez ranked not just as the top pitcher, but as one of the top players in franchise history, period. Not only that, you'll find a decent, hard-working human being. I don't know what Ubaldo Jimenez is up to these days, but I hope he's doing well. <laughs>